If you're new to the channel, I'm Dan and this is Sailing Gear. I have another long running YouTube channel called Sailing Bellachandra and Sailing Gear is a brand new channel I created in order to test out new, used and forgotten sailing and cruising gear in order to help out new and existing cruisers giving honest and unbiased opinions and letting cruisers know what works and what doesn't. Be sure to check out the show notes below for links and information on all the gear and topics being discussed. Hey guys, so it's been almost two years since I installed the Raspberry Pi Navigation system on Bellachandra. Not only that, we've been cruising full-time for about a year now and using the Raspberry Pi as our main navigation onboard computer throughout the entire journey down to the Caribbean and throughout the Caribbean. And it's held up very well for us. We're very happy. We didn't spend a lot of money. It took a little bit of time to get it installed, but it's working great and it's been pretty good so far. Honestly, we haven't had any major problems with the system, knock on wood. I made a complete video on how to install a Raspberry Pi navigation system on YouTube and I suggest you go back and watch it. It explains in detail how I installed the Raspberry Pi system, all of the components, how I connected them, how I installed the software so that you yourself can do this at home and build your own Raspberry Pi navigation system. An onboard computer which has a Wi-Fi broadcasting signal to send your multiplexed boat data out to a mobile device or a chart plotter at your home station. Being that the Raspberry Raspberry Pi is not a marine device. Having that on board in a marine environment and running it for almost two years, I thought that we would probably have some problems. Maybe we would need to replace the Pi or some of the components. But honestly, nothing in that system has failed or corroded or deteriorated. All of the connections are still good and all of my serial buses are still working and my Raspberry Pi is still up and running. The processor has not melted. The actual Raspberry Pi itself has not shown any rust or corrosion and it's still functioning just fine and uh, the whole system in general has been quite good for us. I would attribute that to good waterproofing and just planning in advance. That said, this video is about our experience using our Raspberry Pi navigation system which has worked out very well. So I would recommend a Raspberry Pi navigation system for your boat but you must pay close attention to how you install it and make sure that your connection connections are clean, secure, protected, and not going to be exposed to any of the elements of a marine environment, which could potentially cause some serious problems with your Raspberry Pi system. The success of your own Raspberry Pi system will depend on the quality of your install and how you look after it. A Raspberry Pi is an onboard ship's computer, taking all of your boat data from around your boat multiplexing it into a data stream, then offering it up as a Wi-Fi signal to be accessed throughout the boat, either by a chart plotter, mobile device, cellular phone, laptop, or any device that can connect to a Wi-Fi signal. We have a display at the nav station, one in the cockpit, and then on a mobile device if you so choose. A Raspberry Pi onboard navigation system can be used with any existing marine instruments as an alternative to installing an entirely new navigation system on your boat. A Raspberry Pi has many other functions as well. It's a Linux-based operating system with USB ports and serial ports all over the device. Through the USB ports, a GPS or an AIS system can be installed directly into the Pi without purchasing expensive marine-grade equipment. With a Raspberry Pi, you can get most of the expensive navigation tools for a fraction of the cost. First, I'll take you on a quick step-by-step -step on how I prepare the boat for sailing using our Raspberry Pi navigational computer. First, I go to my DC breaker control panel and switch on all of my navigation instruments, starting with my GPS, depth sounder, wind instruments, chart plotter, which is really just a USB cable running to the cockpit for my tablet, and my autopilot. Then, I get out my Android tablet. I put this protective waterproofing bag around it. Then I mount it to my binnacle, connect the USB, and turn it on. Once it's on, I activate my open CPN chart plotting software, which is already set up to read my NMEA0183 multiplex data being fed from my Raspberry Pi through a Wi-Fi signal. Also, as a backup, I turn on my phone and run OpenCPN there as well where I can access all of the same boat data from my handheld device. Once this is done and all of the systems on board have booted up, we're ready to go sailing. 
I've made a few improvements since my last video on how to install an onboard computer and Raspberry Pi navigation system on your boat. We've since done away with some of our analog instruments and we're able to purchase some Raymarine cockpit displays, which work on SeaTalk and connects to our autopilot very nicely. Using that in a small SeaTalk to NMEA bridge device, I'm able to get all of my NMEA 0183 data out of the SeaTalk network and into my Raspberry Pi. Having now done away with our old analog anemometer and BNG cockpit display, Displays. I've since upgraded to a digital yacht WND100 wind instrument. This is a masthead anemometer with its own built-in NMEA 0183 output signal. Using this anemometer, I don't need a cockpit display to interpret the signal coming from the masthead and turning it into NMEA 0183 data. Instead, the NMEA 0183 data is fed directly into my Raspberry Pi. Now, in OpenCPN, I can see all of my wind data on the screen, whereas before I only had a cockpit display and was not able to see my wind data from my mobile devices. Sometimes, especially entering harbors, we sail using Navionics, as the Navionics charts have superior updated depth information, which we find most helpful, especially here in the Caribbean. But at sea, we always prefer OpenCPN, as with our Raspberry Pi, OpenCPN will feed us live active AIS data and we can see other ships around us, their speed, their heading, and any collision information we might need. AIS delivered through the Raspberry Pi using OpenCPN is excellent. I don't know what our trip from Nova Scotia all the way to the Caribbean would have been like if we didn't have AIS. It was truly essential to identify cargo ships and cruise ships and other vessels as, especially at night on the coast of the United States, there can be heavy amounts of sea traffic and on more than one occasion we've come very close to cruise ships and tankers, but we're able to avoid them knowing their heading and their speed using the AIS system. Before we left Nova Scotia for our long trip to the Caribbean, I considered the possibility that the Raspberry Pi could fail, especially where it's a completely do-it-yourself system, I wanted to make sure I had some sort of backup in place in case it failed. To do so, I went online and ordered a second Raspberry Pi and SD card. Using some basic software, I was able to clone my SD card and make a second backup SD card so my backup Raspberry Pi would have an operating system pre-installed and ready to go. I then placed this second fully programmed Raspberry Pi into a watertight container and kept it here inside the chart station in case of an emergency. So far, I haven't had any problems with my first Raspberry Pi. After a full year of Caribbean cruising, it's still going strong without any corrosion or issues so far, knock on wood. If you're starting your own Raspberry Pi project, if there's one thing I cannot stress more is to have decent quality serial to USB connectors. Using the wrong connectors can be very frustrating and lead to confusing results. Make sure that you get decent serial to USB connectors with lots of blinking LED lights for both transmit and receive, TX and RX. Another recommendation I have from experience is if you have more than four items to plug into the USB ports on your Raspberry Pi, you will need an external USB hub. Make sure you get an external USB hub that is powered. The amount of power the Raspberry Pi delivers is very minimal. If you're going to use an external USB hub, it's very important that it has its own power source. If you notice any loss in data while running your system, it may be directly related to not having enough power running through your USB connections. So that's the end of this video with an update on our Raspberry Pi system and how it's been working for us out at sea and on the boat. I hope you enjoyed it. And again, if you haven't checked out our how to install a Raspberry Pi navigation system video, just click this link here. It'll take you right to that video. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this new channel sailing gear and make sure you check out the show notes below for links and information on all the topics discussed. If you want, you can leave a like or a comment and please subscribe. Just go below, look for that big red subscribe button, press that button and be sure to check out our other channel on YouTube, Sailing Bella Chandra, where you can become a Patreon member and support both channels. Thanks. See you later.